from Durham. Great to have you with us as Santucci rocks and delivers. And off we go with strike one. Good start for Santucci, finding the fastball for a strike to kick things off. Santucci coming off a really nice start in the win over Virginia last week. Quickly gets ahead, nothing in two. Santucci in that 9-4 victory for the Blue Devils last Friday gave up just two earned runs over five innings, but had to pitch around some traffic. Four walks, but did strike out six batters, but did throw over 100 pitches for the first time this year. He did. It was a labor for him, though. You mentioned the bases on balls, and that's one thing Chris Pollard would love to see him cut down on would be free bases. Pretty good start there as he gets Viegas looking. And a good start for Santucci. Take another look. Strikeout number 58 in 35 and a third innings on the season for Santucci. Thanks to the bottom of the zone there. And it'll bring Blake Sear to the plate. Sear, who is coming off a phenomenal rookie campaign. He was named a freshman All-America last year and is on the Bobby Bragan Award watch list as this season begins. See Santucci starting off. Sear backwards with a breaking pitch in for a strike. Fastball socked out to center field. Devin Obi on the move. And Obi into the right center field alleyway for out number two. Great job by our camera crew to track that ball and give us a display of the flags blowing out to right center field. Obi with a terrific job. As you can see, plenty of speed to get there in time just prior to the warning track. Absolutely love our camera crew tonight. Great group of guys. <laughs> Always. Wind is going to be a factor today, really blowing in now as the first pitch missing to the aforementioned Daniel Cuvet. Cuvet off to a really nice start. He's labored a bit in league play. He's hitting 391 on the year, but just a 244 average inside the conference. He takes ball two outside. Cuvet, who has reached base in Nine consecutive games for the Hurricanes, rated as the number nine third base, but nationally, according to D1 Baseball, just a couple of weeks ago. Took a little umbrage with that call. It's two and one. Santucci has done a nice job being effective here in the first. Pitching ahead in the count, looking for an economical frame. Good fastball there to level the count. Santucci gets Cuvet to spoil one off to the right. Fifth ACC start of the year for Santucci, looking to move his league record to 3-0 if he can get a victory tonight. 2-0 in the league, 26 strikeouts over 18 league innings. Still 2-2 two and two on the Miami third baseman. And the pitch home. Out to center field again. Obi turning into the alleyway, slowing now and makes the catch to retire the side. Three up and three down for Santucci in the first. Nice start for the Duke Southpaw. Was Balls off the table, and that's how he recorded a good many outs versus Clemson. Yeah, they call that tunneling, right? The ball's coming from the same tunnel, so hard for a hitter to pick up what exactly it's going to be out of the hand. Absolutely. You can call it whatever you want. I call it the same <laughs> spot coming out of his hand. Uh, but uh, he's been terrific. And you mentioned it, Chris, Steady Eddie. He's been the Friday night starter. He's been the guy they're going to turn the ball to and just get outs. And he's certainly accomplished that. And there you see 15 strikeouts against zero walks and a complete game victory over the number two team in the country. So he comes in, should have a great deal of confidence. And the first pitch is chopped up the middle and picked up by the shortstop Jimenez and throws out the Duke leadoff man, Zach Morris. Nice play by Jimenez, who has been uh, charged with some errors this year. He had seven errors on the year, but looked effortlessly there. Another look. Great play all around. Sidearm just to get it out of his hand. And let's not discount the terrific one-handed pick at first base by Torres. So one down and brings up Ben Miller riding the wave, a 10-game hitting streak into action tonight. He's also reached base in 13 consecutive games. And takes low ball one. Miller, who's been kind of the story of this lineup for the Blue Devils so far this year. I mentioned the 10-game hitting streak, 18 multi-hit games, and he's got five straight games where he's had multi-hits during that streak. Feathers one out to center field for Long. 
And two down. So quick work here for Zeal. Three pitches, two outs. And A.J. Gracia coming up. Back to Zeal's outing against Clemson. The 15 strikeouts he had last week, the most by a Hurricane pitcher since Brian Radzwanski had 16 back in 2013 against Virginia Tech. But I think the most impressive for Zeal threw it 118 pitches, but 75% of the pitches he threw last week were strikes. Yeah, that's awfully impressive, and that's why he didn't walk anybody. You know, he's able to be around the zone with all three of his pitches in just a fantastic effort. And keep in mind, he also had a complete game, albeit it was a seven-inning affair against North Carolina a couple weeks ago. Really does wonders for a pitching staff when your guy on Friday can give you six, seven, eight, nine innings. You can't put a price tag on it. It is a premium effort in our league to be able to get a complete game or just seven innings in a nine inning affair on Friday. It sets the tone for the rest of the weekend. It rests your bullpen as we've got a delay here in the action. Uh, oh. Looks like a malfunction maybe with the headgear. <laughs> the, the pitch com as it, whatever we're going to call it. No visit. No. Laz Gutierrez, the Miami pitching coach in his first year, came out to talk with our home plate umpire, Barry Chambers. I think Chris Pollard went out to make sure we didn't have, did not have a pitch clock infraction, but now we seem to be on the same page. Nothing in two on Gracia, and Zeal misses with the fastball. Zeal made 16 starts for Miami, most on the team a year ago. Went eight and four with a 4.3 earned run average. 100 strikeouts and 92 innings. Gracia trying to keep the inning alive. And the payoff pitch on the Blue Devil right fielder. To the right side, knocked down by Torres. He'll flip to the pitcher covering, and that'll be it for the Blue Devils in their half of the first inning. It's just a great representative uh, for the Duke Athletic Department. Number two in all-time wins in Duke baseball history as Jonathan Santucci back to work and pumps in a strike on Dorian Gonzalez, the Miami second baseman. One of the few left-handers in the hurricane batting order today against the left-hander Santucci. But misses with an off-speed pitch to level the count. Gonzalez is having a nice run in league play, hitting 314 inside the league. To the right side, and there's our first base runner. That's trouble down the right field line. Gonzalez thinking about two, but drops anchor at first base with a leadoff single. Good piece of hitting there by Gonzalez, pulling one through the right side. Now Torres, who has just been terrific for Miami. Torres, who is on the Golden Spikes Award midseason watch list that was announced earlier this week. Wow, the guy hitting 434 <laughs> makes the Golden Spikes watch list. No offense to the Golden Spikes watch list. <laughs> Seems like a no brainer, right? Seems like it. Overshift on here against Torres, who takes strike one. Again, Santucci starting with the breaking pitch. And look at those numbers 1.184 OPS. The aforementioned 434 average. A ground ball going to beat the shift, punching one the other way. And Gonzalez will stop at second, and the Hurricanes have something brewing in the second inning. Really, really nice piece of hitting here with the shade to the left. And Torres just knowing exactly what to do with the pitch. It's on the, really right down the middle and not trying to do too much with that pitch. Excellent piece of hitting. That's how you become eighth in Division I in hits right there. Not trying to do too much. Forget the 434 average. <laughs> That's right. Just went up. Here's Lucas Costello, the Miami DH. That's a Miami team that's not known for playing small ball, only nine sacrifice bunts this year. Would you think about a bunt here? Yes. As he squares the bunt and bunts it foul. Do you keep the bunt on with one strike? I would. You know, here we are in the second inning. You've got your ace on the mound. You've got Duke's ace on the mound. You don't know how the rest of the game's gonna play out. Get ahead early. This could be a 2-1 final. It also could be a 9-8 final, but if you can 
get a run on the board, and that puts pressure on the home team each and every inning, and you like that when you've got your ace on the mound. Costello takes the ball. Does have one sacrifice on the year, does the Miami DH. His first year in Coral Gables, played prior at Wake Forest, was a member of the College World Series team for the Demon Deacons last year. Duke's bunt defense has the first baseman charging, leaving the third baseman, Miller, at home for a potential force out at third to cut down the lead runner. So if you're Costello, you're now trying to bunt the ball down the third baseline to make Santucci make a great play. Regardless, you know, Santucci, if he were to field the ball on the third base line, having to pivot all the way around to get to first base. Bunted back to the mound. Santucci goes to third and gets the lead runner. Great play by Santucci. Unfortunate bounce for Costello. Just didn't get it down the third base line and hit a comebacker right to the pitcher. And Sam Tucci, who for a long time in his Duke career was a two-way guy, an outfielder and a pitcher, showing some of the athleticism there. So one down brings up Carlos Perez, the second-year catcher for the Hurricanes, and he takes ball one. Perez, who has seen most of his time in the lineup this year against left-handed pitching. A 672 OPS entering play today. And he's ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes. Chris, we're going to have to see if we can find out the story, if there's a story, behind jersey number 61. I feel like a spring training game here. <laughs> Outside, 3 and up. If you're Perez, taking two, you get a strike? Absolutely. Santucci, 24 walks in 36 and a third on the year. Takes a strike to us. Perez, you mentioned that Santucci had to pitch through some traffic, had four walks in five innings a week ago. And it's three and two. And we talk about it every broadcast, and, and that's applying game pressure at every possible opportunity. And so first and second, one out, obviously early in the game, and you jump ahead, three balls and no strikes against, albeit the ace, a guy that walked four last weekend. Put the game pressure on the opponent and see what happens. And they will. Base is loaded here with just one man out. That's sort of what Miami head coach J.D. Arteaga was telling us in the conversation. He said, hey, we're a young team. This is a Miami team that their best players, admittedly, are freshmen and sophomores, and they're, they've been inconsistent. They're trying to be more mature and applying game pressure consistently is something the coaching staff is looking for. Yeah, and coach was very candid in that conversation saying, you know, we've played well against really good teams, and we haven't played well against other teams. And that's a part of the, the mature process is allowing a club that is younger in age, younger in experience to go through some of those experiences in order to get better and better as the season goes along. One and one on Antonio Jimenez. That's kind of the hardest thing for a young team, isn't it, to find consistency? I mean, there are 29 games into the season today. But want to be playing your best baseball a month from now, not necessarily in early April. Absolutely. You want to be playing great in April, but if you had to choose, let's play great in April or great in mid to late May, you choose the latter. Santucci way ahead. Out to left field. This is Albright loping over. He has room, makes the catch. Torres tags it third, and Miami has a 1-0 lead. Sixth RBI of the year for Jimenez. Great job by Jimenez just to do his job. You know, for a freshman to be able to come in here and, and have an extremely quality at bat to get the first run on the board, that's impressive. We saw him do it with the leather in the bottom half of the first inning. Now he drives in the first run. Good start for the series for him. Now the ninth place hitter taking a bat. It's Jacoby Long. Oh, 
the one strike pitch from Santucci. 0 and 2. And if you're Santucci and the Blue Devils here, you get off the field only allowing a, a one run to score. Is that a win for Duke? Absolutely. You know, first and second, nobody out on solid contact base hits. Wasn't a blooper by any stretch of the imagination. And here you are able to get out of this with only one run across. I would say that is a win for the Blue Devils. Santucci overthrowing a fastball there. And if you're Miami, if Santucci does get out of this by retiring long, you're probably a little bit disappointed. Couldn't execute the sacrifice bunt that could have led to bigger and better things, but you'll take the lead. Long able to stay alive. This is a Miami team that has struggled offensively, especially as of late. The Hurricanes hitting just 215 with one home run over the last five games. But it's been the pitching staff that has really kept the minute. And obviously, when you've got a guy like Zeal, <laughs> it helps you win a lot of games. A little ground ball will keep long at the plate. I mean, this is a Miami team that coming into the season felt like they were probably going to be more of a small ball hit and run, get guys over, gap to gap kind of team after they lost half of the home runs they hit as a team from four guys who went on to professional baseball or graduation. As that one to third in between hop four, Miller has to hurry the throw and no, not in time. The bases are loaded as Miller a little late with the throw. Great hustle down the line by Long. Looked like he just beat the throw, that bottom line. The umpire did not signal that Bravo had come off the base. As we see the replay, probably did come off the base, but I think he beats it anyway. Great hustle there. So now the base is loaded again for Miami. It's the third hit of the inning for the Hurricanes and back to the top of the order in Viegas. Santucci has labored a bit this inning, nearly hit him. Hey, you mentioned struggling to score. That series against Clemson, five total runs in three games. This was the first time Miami scored a run in 24 innings. They scored in the second game, the 25 innings, they scored in the second game of the Clemson series a week ago today and have not scored since. Did not score in the midweek game either. But a run this inning and Santucci trying to limit the damage in the second. So the Hurricanes went 25 consecutive scoreless innings. It's rivaling the New York Mets. <laughs> well, at least the Hurricanes have played games. The Mets have not been able to play some games. <laughs> They've been snowed out too much. Santucci with the 2-2. And Viegas stays alive. Thirty pitches for Santucci this inning. Hit him, and it's two nothing Hurricanes. We talked about the free bases in Santucci start last week. More free offense, the rookie All America a season ago. That one nearly to the backstop. Yeah, off-speed pitch, and if Santucci cannot get that back and have the ability to throw the breaking pitch for strikes, it's going to be a short outing. Two and oh. Yeah, back-to-back -back breaking pitches and back-to-back -back pitches that were candidly nowhere near the strike zone. Against the guy who has been patient for the Hurricanes this year. All ACC freshman team a season ago takes another breaking ball, this time for a strike. Have you noticed anything in Santucci's delivery this inning? No. Swing and a miss, two and two. Back to the off speed. So this at bat, four pitches, four breaking pitches. First two nowhere close. The next two were phenomenal. So just a matter of trying to find the consistency. And that one dribbled, dribbled off the bat of Sear to stay alive. So no fastballs yet out of five pitches in this plate appearance. You have to think that Santucci's going to try and buzz one by him at some point. 
Another 2-2. Two -two. Dropped in the breaking ball for strike three. Or not. Couple of strikeouts in the ball game for Santucci. He limits the Miami Dam. Currently 52 degrees, Chris. After it was in the 80s earlier this week. First pitch on Bravo in there for a strike. And if we get to extra frames tonight, it'll get below 50. Oof. Some of the hurricanes maybe not used to in the sunny South Florida weather. As that ball lifted out to left field, Sear makes the call and the catch. One out. So Bravo retired to open up the second and brings up the rookie Chase Cruson. Cruson, the designated hitter in tonight's lineup, hitting 324. Three home runs, 10 driven in. This is only his 12th start of the season as Duke plays game number 30. Crucian's played well in ACC play, hitting 279 in the league. Small sample size, of course. When does a sample size I don't go know. from small to adequate or large? Well, I think that's, an, that's a debate. It's an interesting debate. For example, Miami using the big overshift here against Cruson with three players on the right side of the infield. Cruson has 37 career bats. Is 37 career bats enough to tell you that he's going to hit it into the shift? Here, that's true as he grounds out for out number two. 38, and yes. Good pitch there. Got it in on the hands. Cruson just couldn't get the barrel of the bat around and a slow dribbler to first base and two outs in the inning. But you could argue Alex Stone, who's playing in his fourth year at Duke, who's had substantially more than 37 career bats, maybe has a bigger sample size of how you would play him in terms of a shift if Stone takes ball one. Much larger sample size. Yes. Stone, who has struggled a bit in league action, hitting just 218 in ACC play, rolls that one to third for Cuvay. Up with it quickly and retires the Duke catcher. Six up and six down for Gage Zeal to start the ball. Cast of players there as we start the third, and Cuvay swings and misses for strike one. Tells you how good of the league the ACC is with, what, 12 guys from the league on the midseason watch list? Yeah, and probably could have added another 12. Absolutely. The depth of the Atlantic Coast Conference in full effect here in 2024. Well, fouled off to the right. I mean, it tells you everything you need to know about how good the league is. Duke six and six in the ACC, 21 and eight overall, and still ranked number nine nationally. Yeah. Daniel Cuvet not on that list, correct? Correct. And he's hitting 391 with a team best nine home runs. Got to make the cut somehow, I guess. I don't yeah. know. I don't know how you differentiate between who is or is not on the list. It's like sample size. It is. Bounding ball at the third baseline. That'll roll foul. Second time through the order here. We've seen Santucci throw more off-speed pitches than he did first time around. You also have to wonder if the cooler temperatures keep that fastball in check a little bit more as he comes back 94 inside part of the plate to punch one out. And he says, hey, broadcast crew, nothing wrong with the fastball tonight. Not broadcast crew. That would be on our chase. I didn't say a word. <laughs> Great pitch here. Just froze Cuvay. I mean, not much you're going to be able to do with that pitch if you're Cuvay, right? I mean, no. Fastball, inner half. Yeah, the, the best thing you can do is get the barrel out, but nine times out of ten, all you're going to do is pull it foul anyway. Gets ahead of Gonzalez here. Now Gonzalez bunting over Santucci's head and a base hit. If you practice it enough, you can do it. I don't know that he's been practicing that on the regular, but sometimes you got to have one drop in. Obviously, bunting for a base hit. It looked like he was trying to drag that bunt up the first baseline. Now, maybe not. He might have been trying to push it to the second baseman, yeah. just get it past Santucci on that side. 
And now Gonzalez aboard for Torres, who singled to the right side his first time up and takes a little bit low. Gonzalez on the year, 0 for 2 in the stolen base category. Miami team that doesn't run a ton, just 11 of 18 this year are the Hurricanes in stolen bases. There's a strike, one and one. Torres, who really had to bide his time last year during his rookie season, played in 18 games. He had a, four starts at DH, a couple starts at third base. And he was kind of stuck, especially at third base with Johan Di Morales, who was phenomenal for Miami. All-America went on to get drafted very highly. And so he's just a guy that's been biding his time and has made the move from third base to first base this year and having a heck of a sophomore season. He really is, and, and he's a young man that that the Miami coaching staff, they just have to have him in the lineup somewhere. Obviously, he can play third base, he can play first base. DH is never out of the question. Can he play a corner outfield spot maybe as his career goes on? But you, you don't hit in the 430s and not find a place in the lineup, and Santucci does a good job second time around getting a swing and miss for strike three. And back to the strikeout there for his fourth punch out. And brings up Lucas Costello, the Miami DH. Costello with limited action in ACC games. He's three for 19 in the league in ring action today. But a guy who played in over 30 games for Wake Forest a year ago, a team that, as we mentioned, went to the College World Series. And having a guy like that on your roster, huge plus for J.D. Ar JD Ar Artiaga's club. Without a doubt, and obviously the transfer portal is going to allow teams to fill in some gaps as that dry, line drive hit well, but flag down. Find. Jumps in a strike there to Wallace Clark to open up the third. And given the, the current state of the transfer portal, you can't make a whole lot of a start from a guy against a team a season ago as Clark Yanks won foul. But Zeal. Six innings, only two earned runs, no walks, and five strikeouts against Duke and Coral Gables a year ago. And given, just like you said, like you alluded to, this, this roster for Duke is so different than last year's roster. He probably got the scouting report and said, I don't know any of these guys. Ground ball to second base for Gonzalez, and that's seven straight retired to open up the ball game. You know, obviously he faced Alex Stone. Probably Obi. Obi in the lineup, Albright in the lineup. Basically it. But you wonder as well, you never know where a guy could have seen somebody else in summer ball, maybe on the Cape or in another one of the leagues, but I don't know that that translates a whole lot from summer to spring. Obi climbing in and takes strike one. There's also something to be said for not having competed against another player. Into the shift here, big hop for the second baseman, Gonzalez for out number two. Because there's familiarity both ways. You know, if you and I have competed against each other, yeah, you may think it's an advantage that I know what you're gonna do, but it may actually be a disadvantage because you may have a better beat on what's going on with me Obviously, that's not the case between me and you. <laughs> You're never going to have the upper hand, but that's okay. <laughs> I just resigned myself to that fact. Two down bases empty for Tyler Albright. They play Albright to go the other way, a half step in the outfield as he takes ball one. Ninth start this year for Albright out in left field. Takes the ball. After 16 strikeouts against Clemson last week, none so far for Zeal. And it's 3-0 on Albright. No walks last week for the Miami right-hander, and he's on the doorstep of issuing his first free pass tonight. Albright way ahead and takes a strike. Albright 
awaits a 3-1, and that's ball four. There is the first walk, just the 12th of the year issued by Zeal, and the Blue Devils have their first base runner. Good play to parents there for Albright. And you've seen it a million times. First time through an, an order, a starting pitcher who is very confident with great stuff, rolls through the first eight and then loses the nine man to a free base, space on balls. And you're like, did you just lose focus? It's the nine man, but obviously every offensive lineup at this level is gonna be of high quality. And now he pitches from the stretch for the first time tonight and we'll see if Duke can get something going here with two outs. More so for one, although he does lead the team with 17 two out RBI this year. Takes low to the level of the count. Let's go, Gabe. How does the approach change for Duke second time through the order? I think you're, you're more comfortable. You've seen the stuff. You've seen the fastball. You've seen the, the arm angles, the arm slots, the release. You know, you still have to be aggressive because that's the way that this Blue Devil offense operates. You know, not sitting around looking for walks or to get hit by a pitch. You know, or hope he throws one to the backstop to get another base. You got to stay aggressive. You know, always looking to go the other way if you can with a, a pitcher that's got great stuff. Chopper to third in between hop scoop nicely by Cuvee and gets the out. Really good play by the Miami third baseman. And Zeal has been so good. You get a little bit of pressure on your own human nature. Okay, my counterpart is throwing up zero after zero after zero and looking really good doing it. Now, how does that affect my approach? One and one on Perez. And Santucci misses with the fastball. We're talking about Zeal facing the Blue Devils last year. Santucci did not face Miami. That was when he was hurt last season. So. Not sure if that's an advantage or not, but just pointing out that it's been a couple years since Santucci's pitched against this Miami team. Outside for ball three. Perez walked in his first at bat, trying to find his way aboard to start the fourth inning. And ball four. Second walk for Santucci, he's also hit a batter, and the leadoff man is aboard for the Hurricanes with Jimenez coming up. Frustrating in a lot of regards there, but for Santucci, even more frustrating because you get ahead with a first pitch strike. Yep, and then you can't find the zone, and now if you're Miami here, potentially a bunt situation. Your starting pitcher's been excellent. You're already up two to nothing, and there we go. Menez takes upstairs, ball one. So now with a runner on first base and not first and second, Duke's bunt defense flips around with Miller charging in from third base, allowing Bravo to stay at home at first. Popped up, down the third baseline. Miller drifting over, and he's out of room. Surprised the bunt was taken off there? A little bit. A little bit. So now one and one. Let's go inside the mind of the Miami offensive staff. Do you put the bunt back on here? I certainly would. You know, just playing to get that third run across. Get a runner in scoring position to create more game pressure. Swing and a miss. And now you would assume the button definitely off here with two strikes. Yeah, and Duke certainly anticipating that as Miller at third base backs up. A good two yards behind the bag. And strike three. Santucci paints the corner and picks up his fifth strikeout of the ball game. Good response here from Santucci. Yeah, you can't let that one go by. And Jimenez knew it as soon as it hit the catcher's mitt that he was going to be called out on strikes and puts his head down and walks back to the dugout. Now Jacoby Long, the Miami center fielder, had that bunt single in his first at bat, or the infield single in his first at bat, and takes a swing and a miss, strike one. Played in 51 of Miami's 63 games a year ago and has really turned into a phenomenal defensive outfielder. 
I remember that highlight reel catch he made against North Carolina in the ACC tournament last year. Yep, the senior out of Palm Beach Gardens, a mainstay in the Miami program. And as you mentioned, elite defensive skills. Ground ball up the middle and a base hit for Long, turning the corner and hanging on is Perez. And just a seeing eye single for the Hurricane center fielder. See the replay here, just right back where it came from. Almost hit second base, which could have caused additional life to the play there. But nonetheless, Long, a nice two for two here in game one of the three-game series. And now Miami begins the third time through the order against Santucci as Viegas spits on a fastball low. Santucci nearing 80 pitches. Nobody up in the Duke bullpen. A oh, feeble swing there as the count evens, one and one. Viegas hit by that pitch, which brought home the second of the Miami runs in that two-run second inning for the Hurricanes. Santucci out of the stretch and misses low again. Seems like Santucci has just been fighting his command really from the word go tonight. Yeah, he really has. I don't know if it's potentially the weather, you know, a, a balmy 52 here at, at first pitch. Uh, and also Miami's really good, yeah. you know, and, and again, trying to maybe be a little bit too perfect can cause some delivery issues. To center field, Obi on the move, makes the gliding catch, and they've got a shot to double the runner off, the throw errant, but Obi with another nice play to save a base hit and potentially a run. We talked about Long's defensive prowess in center field for Miami. Well, Obi certainly matches that and has shown some quality plays, and there you see Perez a little aggressive off the bat. He thought that was down. Good job by the coaching staff for Miami to get him back to avoid the double up. Uh, Sear digs in, 0 for 2 tonight. Santucci trying to get off the field unscathed. Drops in a breaking ball to even the count. Going back to Perez yeah. at second base, certainly not a base running mistake because you're not tagging on that in advancing a third. So no harm, no foul for him. Just good for him to hustle and get back to avoid the double play. Some of that is for each player. They've got an awareness of how far they can go and still get back, right? Certainly. You know, and you have to know the outfielder's arms, you know, and that's in the scouting report. Uh, you have to know your, your own capabilities. Santucci capable here of getting off the field as he bright with two outs in the third inning. And he starts Ben Miller off with strike one here. Defense has helped him a couple times, a couple really nice plays, especially by the shortstop Jimenez, as that one is, what's the call? I guess they're gonna say it hit him. Barry Chambers more worried about himself than he was what was actually going on on the field. Can you blame him? I mean, make the call first. It's kind of your job. Self-preservation. No, I'll make the call. Perez <laughs> saying, hey, that should be a foul ball. And <laughs> oh, and two on the Duke third baseman. There you see Perez, the catcher, and Miller, the batter. Hello. Uh, making sure that Mr. Chambers is OK before Zeal uncorked that one to the backstop. Check on your elders. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Miller couldn't stop his swing. Strike three. And there is the first strikeout for Zeal. And it comes leading off the fourth inning. Yeah, just an over-aggressive Miller in the box there. No way he was going to get upstairs to get that one. But with two strikes, you got to be ready to swing the bat. Now the big overshift on here for Miami against the rookie Gracia, who grounds one into the shift. Backhanded stop by Torres, who takes it himself, two out. Smoke. 
Eight ground ball outs now for Zeal, and what that tells me is he's getting some nice movement on his pitches, certainly his fastballs that are just being beaten into the ground. Maybe some sink on that fastball? Exactly, exactly. And as you mentioned, Chris, Miami's done a terrific job defensively. Which has not been the case all year for the Hurricanes. Coming to action today, 10th in the ACC, fielding 969 as a group. Some of that could have obviously been earlier in the year as they were trying to figure out pieces in infield. Bravo, nothing of one today. He's behind in the count, nothing in two. Zeal delivers. Whoa. Not a bad waste pitch there on 0 and 2. Only one base runner has reached for Duke tonight. That was a two out walk to Albright last inning. And a breaking ball for strike three. Bookend punch outs for Zeal. Cuve has flied to center and struck out. And he's ahead. One ball and no strikes here in the fifth. Santucci continuing his third time through the order. And as he begins the fifth inning, there is some action up in the bullpen behind him. A swing and a miss to even the count. Fouled off, it's one and two. Cuvé, one of those guys that probably grew up going to Miami games all his life. His dad works at the Mi University of Miami Medical Center there in Coral Gables. Gabe Nard getting loose in the Blue Devil bullpen. As that ball out to right field, Gracia gives it a look, but it's out of play. Now we have seen this year Cuvé with some power to the opposite field. Remember that big home run he hit against Florida earlier this year that we showed you at the top of the broadcast? Has nine home runs on the season. Yeah, you can see how physically mature he is for a freshman with plenty of room to add more muscle to that frame. Good six foot three. Listed at 6'3", 237. <laughs> Only a freshman. As we've mentioned, I mean, think about what a summer is going to do to him inside the weight room and another fall into the Miami system as he takes ball three here. Yeah, terrific looking young prospect who obviously is off to a fantastic start to his collegiate career. And coaxes a walk. Santucci with his third walk so far the outing. He's also hit a batter. And the Hurricanes have the leadoff man aboard again. Back-to-back -back innings now. Miami's had the leadoff man on three times in the five innings. The Hurricanes have had the leadoff man on base. Now you've got to deal with Gonzalez with one on. He'll ground one to second base. Morris trying to turn two. They get one at second, but that's it. So Cuve cut down the lead runner. One on, one out, and it brings Torres to the plate. Really nice job by Morris there at second base. I didn't think he had a great shot to get the lead runner, but a nice play. Yeah, good job staying patient. Had to throw a fastball to his buddy Wallace Clark just to get that lead runner. Clark probably better off just holding on to it. Now Torres. A single and a strikeout tonight. Takes low here. I feel like for Santucci, who's now right at 100 pitches, this is probably his last inning. Yeah, if Nard's ready to go, you would think. Ground ball to short, could be two. Clark to Morris for one, on to first, double play. A pitcher's best friend as Santucci and the Blue Devils turn. You work there as an assistant coach and then to get this opportunity, um, you know, to, to be the man in charge of a program that you have so much love for, you've given so much to, and, and now you get to give even more just in a different capacity. And 
He knows what it's like to, to recruit young men into this elite college baseball program. He played in it. You know, obviously he recruited into it as an assistant coach, and, and I think he's going to do a phenomenal job. Uh, and I think it, uh, you know, it's great for, for Miami baseball to be terrific. It's great for the ACC when Miami baseball is terrific, and, and he's got a great opportunity to take them uh, to the heights that, that they aspire. Upstairs on Cruson, we asked him about that in our conversation this week, and he said it's an honor for me and said it's not going to change. Always going to be an honor to lead this program. But just great words from J.D. Arteaga, the Miami head coach, as Cruson takes a little bit low to fill up the count. And it was great. You know, you could sense how humble he is to have this opportunity. And he, he's grateful. And uh, and I think it goes both ways. Miami has to be ecstatic that they were able to have one of their own, you know, run this program. Cruson fights off a good 3-2 pitch. Uh, we also asked him, because he was the pitching coach for a long time, and asked him, how much he still has his hand in the pitching. You know, probably hard to give some of that up. He said he does still have his hand in it, but he said, if I've got my hand too much in it, I hired the wrong guy. Without a doubt. And ACC opponents are, are just happy that he's not going to take the ball himself and go out on the mound, you know, as successful as he was, you know, as a, as a starting pitcher in this conference. But really praise the job that Laz Gutierrez has done, is particularly with Zeal, he said, you know, Laz has got Zeal to do things this year that I couldn't get him to do when I was the pitching coach. I also thought it was interesting when we asked him about, you know, game pressure because he said he was worried about it from the word, from pitch one as a pitching coach, from pitch one to pitch number 139, every time he pitches his team through that day. He said, but now as a manager, you can almost relax a little bit at the start and get into the flow of the game. As that one inside on stone ball one. He's probably kicking himself for not becoming the, the skipper <laughs> a long time ago. Didn't have to worry about, you know, pitch one through 139. I don't think you meant it quite like that, but yeah. So the pressure was maybe a little bit easier. Not that he's not locked in from pitch one, but it, it, when you prepare those scouting reports and you're so locked in on the other team's hitters, you can kind of get a sense maybe for how the game's going to go. One and one on stone as the Blue Devils Still looking for their first hit tonight. And a two and one count on the Duke catcher. Seems as though Duke has had more of a patient approach here against Zeal in the fifth. Yeah, second time through, you want to be you know, a little bit cautious, especially the way things resulted the first time through. Two and one. Stone out to right center. That'll get down for a hit. Turning the corner is Cruson, and the Blue Devils have runners at the corners with nobody out. You mentioned Alex Stone struggling a little bit in conference play. A little inside out swing here, stays true to his fundamentals, keeps his balance and just allows his raw strength to get that one out into right center field and hit at an angle as such. Cruson could get a great read on it off the bat and never hesitating around second base. And Duke with first and third and nobody out here in the fifth. And Wallace Clark takes the ball. Now back-to-back -back hitters that Zeal has fallen behind. I need my tape recorder here. Game pressure. Yeah. You, you put it on a pitcher with that leadoff walk, then you get a hit. Clark fouls it off his body. That hurts. That hurts me, and I'm, <laughs> you know, six first downs away from the guy. <laughs> you can see the grimace on Wallace Clark's face Aldo Plata the Duke athletic trainer will go over and check on Clark It's like maybe the right on uh, your leg guard <laughs> Feel like Barry Bonds and have the whole body armor <laughs> Two on nobody out and Clark takes outside Interesting defensive alignment here for Miami. The second baseman, Gonzalez, a little bit even closer than double play, Dev. The hard hit ground ball to him. He's going to have an opportunity to throw home should Cruson decide to head that way. He's also at a depth where the double play is certainly in order. Two and two. 
and yanked foul down the right field line. Got a hanging breaking ball there and was out in front of it. Gonzalez playing at that depth and with the runner being held at first, that hole is probably a little bit bigger than it appears. The other way and a base hit. Pass the diving Cuve and Duke is on the board in the fifth. There's good hitting and there's great hitting. And that's an example of great hitting as Wallace Clark. The exit velocity is going to be about 40. But that pitch probably a ball. But a nice job of just poking it the other way. Enabling Duke to get on the board and. Obi grounded out is only at bat today and takes a breaking ball for strike one. What do you think the message was to Zeal during that mound visit a moment ago? First the 0-1 on Obi, and that one grounded toward short. Jimenez up with it. Only play is to first, just like a swinging bunt there for Obi, who does a job. Two in scoring position with one out. Yeah, advancing the runners for Obi. Not being called upon to bunt, but via the slow roller ground ball 6-3 in your scorebook. The message to, to Zeal, you know, first time with significant traffic. Obviously, he gave up the first run of the game, but you can't worry about that. You just have to attack each batter, you know, as its own. Don't worry about the, the runners on base and just keep doing what you're doing. Albright to the right side. That'll tie the game. Clark getting the wave around. The throw is offline, and Duke has the lead. And Duke's approach here hasn't been, oh, let's bang the ball off the outfield wall and try and you know, get extra bases. You see Albright here, pitch, fastball, a little bit up in the zone on the outside part of the plate, just knock it through the other side. You know, get good barrel contact and good things will happen. Ball will scoot on this surface a little bit faster than a natural surface. You know, and so we've seen balls not, you know, crushed by any stretch of the imagination that have turned into base hits. And it's, you know, not that it's Duke finding more, you know, luck or bad luck for Miami. It's just the way it's turned out to be. It's part of the game. It is exactly part of the game. And that's low one and one. But I think you bring up a good point. You know, this is a Duke offense that in the series went over Virginia last week. They only hit one home run over those three games. A team that has hit 59 home runs this year. Duke coming in second in the ACC in home runs, eighth nationally, but only the one home run last week. This is an offense that's learning how to win by manufacturing runs. Right, and good to great teams have to learn how to win in a variety of ways. And on a night like tonight, it's 50 degrees. The wind's blowing in for the most part. You know, all those home runs you hit in the first 29 games, you, you can't do that tonight. You can't expect to, you know, hang around, hang around, hit a three-run homer in the seventh inning and go home happy. Uh, you know, you, we haven't seen an extra base hit tonight. No. Uh, from either team. From either team, but certainly not the Blue Devils. And, you know, you look at the extra base hits up and down this lineup, not just home runs, but... You know, 14 doubles for Miller. You know, eight doubles for Bravo, six for Gracia. I mean, they're all over the place. Yeah. But uh, but here tonight, given the conditions, uh, you have to find a way to, to score runs without the long ball or extra base hits. It's, you know, to use the football analogy, you know, you, you got to be able to score points throwing the ball and running the ball if you want to be a great team, unless you are just so ridiculously elite at one or the other. 2-2 two, two again, and that's upstairs, ball three. Good at bat by Morris as Duke begins the third time through the order against Zeal. Nobody up for the Miami Hurricanes in their bullpen. Zeal just at 65 pitches. See here if Duke elects to get Albright, wouldn't be surprised to send him, get a little motion. There he goes. Pitch is golfed out to center field. Long drifting back and makes the catch for out number two. Uh, Zeal was cruising through the first four innings of this game. He had only allowed one base runner. And you take a look at what 
Zeal did first four innings of this game versus the fifth inning tonight. Just tells the story of how good Duke has been now this third time through the order. Yeah, but well, it tells a couple of stories how good Zeal was through four innings and then Duke obviously has made some adjust adjustments, become more comfortable in the batter's box and Miller out toward right center field long is there and that will end the inning. But a productive inning for the Duke Blue Devils as they the game here we are right now or even later in the game uses a setup man for Bielensen. So a, a very versatile right handed sophomore. We saw the numbers one and two, the 3.43 ERA. Nard's been good inside the league as well, making his seventh ACC appearance as that one is low. And how about Jonathan Santucci tonight for the Blue Devils? Obviously, now with Duke's offense getting going in the fifth, Santucci in line for the victory. But it was really, I thought, Santucci doing a great job of keeping the game within striking distance. It, the game could have very much gotten away from the Blue Devils in the middle innings. Without a doubt, give up the two runs in the second and your offense isn't producing. To center field, Obi is there. One out. You know, when your offense is struggling, not just to score runs through four innings, Duke was struggling to get anybody even on base to threaten to score. You know, the mindset of to keep going out there and, and two runs are on the board, hey, I gotta keep him at two, I gotta keep him at two. And for Santucci to respond and throw up three zeros as that's going along on the back end of that two run second inning, very impressive outing. And not like Santucci was cruising either. You know, he left the bases loaded in the third after Miami had scored those two runs. Miami had two on with one out in the fourth and didn't score. Hurricanes had a man on in the third inning. So Santucci for the second straight start really had to pitch through some adversity tonight. He certainly did, and you go back to the two runs that did score. You know, the second one scores on a bases loaded hit batter. Um, you know, so some self-inflicted wounds, if you will, uh, for Jonathan. But then, as you mentioned, uh, pitching around traffic in the third and fourth innings, uh, you know, to keep the, the score at two to nothing, and then Duke's offense breaks through with a three spot in the fifth, and now you're sitting on the bench, and while you maybe not had your best stuff or your best outing, um, you gave up two runs in five innings, and, and that's all your teammates can ask from you. I mean, that's a terrific outing in this conference. I think if you give up two runs in five innings every single Friday night, your team's going to be positioned to win a lot of baseball games. You're, you're certainly going to be in a game, yeah. obviously. Um, and with Duke's depth on the back end coming out of the bullpen, that's almost a quality start. I know it doesn't meet the definition of a quality start, uh, you know, in terms of the baseball, you know, world. But in college baseball, especially in the Atlantic Coast Conference, especially, you know, here with in early April with the temperature as it is, as Clark can't come up with a terrific play and Miami has a base runner, you know, I think any head coach in the Atlantic Coast Conference or across the landscape of college baseball would tell you this day and age, five complete innings, two runs allowed. That's a quality start. Not much Clark could have done there. That was seemed to be a do or die play and made a great effort. Should go as a base hit. Yeah, if, if that's an error, then we're it, gonna it's have a to, hit. We're going to have to have a discussion with somebody. <laughs> Probably need to have a discussion with that person anyway. First pitch misses on Mendez, ball one. Jimenez had the sacrifice fly to get the Hurricanes going tonight offensively. Struck out against Santucci, one of the six strikeouts for the Blue Devil left-hander. Jimenez, a draft-eligible sophomore for the Hurricanes. The 2-0 is a strike, two and one. One on and one out for Nard. Had two solid innings his last time out against Liberty in the midweek. Gave up a hit and struck out one man. 
two great innings, gave an unearned run against Virginia last weekend here at Coombs. This defensive swing there from Jimenez and fights it off to count even now. Obviously, you want to keep your opponent off the scoreboard in every inning, but especially critical here after you've just taken the lead for Nard and the Blue Devils to get a zero here in the top of the sixth. This is where the ball here went to the off speed. And conversely, great time to see how Miami responds. You know, you held the lead since the second inning. You give it up in the fifth. And that's just low. So Nard, after the infield single, gives up a walk. And now Miami threatening. And it's the bottom of the order that's getting it done again for the Hurricanes. Yeah, once again, good job there by Jimenez to stay patient. Draw the walk and now you got to deal with Long who has a couple of hits already this evening. And for a Miami team that as we've discussed has really struggled offensively over the last five games a 215 collective batting average in that span. You can't give a team extra bases and free outs and that's what the Blue Devils have done a couple times tonight. With the extra bases, that one to short could be two. Clark to Morris, and safe at first. Good hustle down the line by Long to keep the inning alive. Flawless turn here at second base. Clark had to wait on it before shoveling it over to Morris. Morris maybe didn't get everything he has on it due to the collision at second base. Certainly a clean play, a good hard clean play at second base to keep things and now we're tied. A base hit in the right center by Villegas on his way to third goes long and the Hurricanes with an answer in the top of the sixth. It is three to three as Villegas drives home his 13th of the year. Great job of hitting here, just driving this ball up in the zone, patient with the breaking pitch. And how does Miami score to tie the game here in the sixth? A base hit that doesn't leave the infield. A walk. Great hustle by the runner at first base to at first base to get a nice clean collision at second base and good hustle by Long to get down the line to keep the inning. And then you get a, a base knock in order to get the third run across. Now Sear, who's 0 for 3 tonight. The freshman All-America a year ago, freshman all ACC team as well. Outside, two balls and no strikes. So Santucci will not factor into tonight's decision. Brady Kirkpatrick, the Duke pitching coach, will come out and use a visit here. What do you think the main message is going to be from the Duke pitching coach? For any pitcher. And misses here, ball three. To your point, a walk would load the bases, would bring Cuvée to the plate. Saw Brooks getting loose in the bullpen a moment ago for the Blue Devils. Nard misses, and the bases are loaded with two out for the Hurricanes. And now the fourth pick, pitch walk allows Nard, as you see him, taking a little bit of time behind the mound. He's got to settle. Settle things down, settle the nerves down, what anxiety he might have. And with a left-hander in the on-deck circle in Gonzalez, would imagine this is the final hitter either way for Nard, as that one whistled foul for strike one. <laughs> Nothing in one of the Miami third baseman. Counts even as Nard misses love. And where Nard has missed today is primarily low, um, which is a whole lot better than missing high. <laughs> Strike two on Cuve. Went up in the zone there to get a foul ball and jump back ahead, one ball and two strikes. Nard trying to wiggle off the hook and misses to even the count. Alex Stone there behind the plate, giving some reassurance. That was a good pitch. Another 2-2. Got him! 
And Nard avoids major danger in the sixth. Bravo and Krusen, three, four, and five. On the first pitch and off speed, this is outside. There's a strike. Big overshift on here against Gracia, who has gone into the shift twice, make that three times, and nearly gets one past the second baseman, but Gonzalez turns in another nice play for the out. Great scouting and great execution of a defensive game plan, as you see there, Gonzalez a good 10 feet into the outfield, if you will. It's all the same surface. Good thing they've got the colors down for us. How would we differentiate? How would we figure it out? Here's Logan Bravo, strike one. A terrific defensive play, and we've seen that all night long from Miami. We've seen now at third base, Cuvay make a great play. Certainly saw the shortstop in the first inning. Jimenez up the middle. We've seen the first baseman, Torres, on that play by Jimenez to scoop one out. And now Gonzalez. Seal needs no defensive help to retire. Bravo on pitches. Yeah, maybe a little low. Good frame job by Perez. Talk a lot about pitch framing or strike stealing, whatever you want to call it. And Perez framed that one very nicely on a pitch that was below the zone, it appeared. Two down, Chase Cruson coming up. And he goes the opposite way, hit fairly well. And down the left field line for extra bases. Sear maybe misplays it a bit. And Cruson at second base with two out. Bit of a circuitous route to that ball by Sear in left field. Yeah, you'll see the, the swing lofted down the left field line. And with a left-handed batter, that ball naturally is going to be going away from the left fielder. So trying to navigate the spin on the ball, the angle, obviously the wind here tonight. Uh, just a really difficult play for, for Sear, who lucky that it didn't turn into a triple with the ball kicking around down there in the corner. So a good recovery to get the ball back in. So now the Blue Devils with two out and a runner in scoring position. And one of their captains, Alex Stone, coming to the plate. Stone single to right field for the first Blue Devil hit. Last inning. Duke with 62, two out RBI as a team this year. Stone to the left side. Jimenez up with it and throws out Stone to end the inning. So the two out double does no harm. A nice bounce back inning for his. Threw it on Tuesday against Liberty in that 9-4 Duke win. Two innings and gave up an unearned run against the Flames on Tuesday night. There you go. Yeah. Threw twice against NC State, twice against Clemson, twice against Wake Forest. You didn't believe me, did you? I was just backing up what you said. Uh, yeah. It's giving our viewers a reason to believe you. Chopper to the left side, deep in the hole is Clark, and not a chance to get the speedy Gonzalez there, especially after it got past Miller for a base hit. Yeah, no chance for Wallace Clark. As we see it again, good effort. Probably better off just eating it and not making a throw, but no issue for Bravo to knock it down in Miami now with business at hand. And again, bottom third of the order making noise for the Hurricanes. And it'll be Torres, who has been lighting the world on fire this year, came in at 434, a base hit earlier, to extend his hitting streak to 10 straight games. I said the bottom of the order, this is the middle of the order. We didn't change orders. We did not, that would be illegal. Yeah, tough to ask Torres to bunt here with his torrid hitting, but certainly could be on the table, but not through two pitches of the plate appearance. If you're wondering about Gonzalez taking off, does not have a stolen base this year, 0 for 2. Although hard to put a guy in motion with one of your best and hottest hitters at the plate. 
Fouled away. Not a ton of swing and miss relatively for Torres. 26 strikeouts and 113 at bats this year. So I'm a team that has not really struck out a lot overall as a group. They've done a really nice job of putting the ball in play. Breaking ball misses, two and two. We've seen years where it's been kind of feast or famine for the Hurricane offense where it's home run or strikeout. But not the case this year. For Darren Fenster and J.D. Arteaga in the offense. Breaking ball swung on and missed. And as we talk about the lack of strikeouts, there is a strikeout for Brooks and a big first out for the Duke left-hander. Yeah, Brooks going upstairs in the zone with that spinner. Only 79 miles an hour. But certainly more than effective. Eighth strikeout for Duke pitching today, as you can see. Now Costello climbing in. Still no activity for Miami in their bullpen. And why would you with Zeal pitching very effectively outside of that one inning? Breaking ball is low on Costello. Yeah, we talked about it earlier in the broadcast. If you can get seven, eight, maybe even nine innings out of your starter on Friday night, what that does, it just creates Saturday and Sunday luxury if you've got a full complement of arms to run out of the bullpen. Two and oh on Costello. That's inside, ball three. Talked about it earlier, the free offense that Duke has given up today, five walks and a hit batsman for the Duke pitching staff. Just cannot continue to give away free bases, and Brooks does that here. So two on with one out, and Carlos Perez coming up. Similar to what we saw in the sixth inning, soft contact base hit that doesn't leave the infield, followed by a base on balls. Although here in the seventh, one out. Getting hot in a hurry. As we've talked about before, sometimes the game on the line maybe in the seventh inning, not so much the ninth inning, where you have to really worry about picking up the save. Swing and a miss, good off speed there from Brooks. Yeah, and, and Duke head coach Chris Pollard and the entire Blue Devil staff has a keen understanding of that. It doesn't matter what inning, you have to try and win the game every inning and can't wait until the ninth to bring Bielenson in or you can't wait until the seventh to bring anyone out of the bullpen and you know allow Santucci to come back out for the sixth. It, it, all of those variables in the equation, uh, if you want that to be a winning result, you have to try and win the game in every inning. 0-2, oh Prooks delivers outside. Good fastball and not a bad idea on 0-2. Oh See if Perez would expand the zone. He did not. Whoa, two and two. Went fastball again that time. Trying to bring it inside and just missed low. Now Brooks out of the stretch. Well, they got the runner picked off. And there's a big second out for the Blue Devils. Miami running themselves out of a potential big inning here. And great job by the Duke defense. You'll see it here. The quick throw to third. You always want to get the ball ahead on the base pass. And by that time, with the runner getting to second base, no man's land, and Duke was able to record the out. So potentially a very significant second out of this inning. And that ends the frame. The Hurricanes with a big time. And, uh, and then the next pitch, Duke gets out of the inning. Do you feel like Gonzalez was going on the pitch there, or was he just trying to get an extra step in case of a base hit? 
I think he's looking to steal if and only if he can time up the delivery from the pitcher. And it looked like he had it. And his, his shuffle moves toward third base uh, indicate I believe he was going to go ahead and go as Duke now gets in business. And there's Wallace Clark once again, critical point in the ball game, making a play. And not, you know, you say making a play. Okay, he stood there and got hit. But uh, he's involved in a, in a play that could certainly, you know, come into the balance of this game. Chris Pollard comes out to say something to home plate umpire Barry Chambers. They were just exchanging pleasantries, maybe checking on dinner plans. I highly doubt that. Okay. Do you bunt here with Obi if you're Duke? Absolutely. Now, keep in mind, not usually the MO for Chris Pollard and the Blue Devils, but we'll see what they've got on here. Clark does have three stolen bases and four attempts this year. If you're thinking about maybe a stolen base, not going here. OB not bunting and takes ball one. Cuvay at third base, even with the bag. So Miami probably not expecting the bunt. As you see the shift now in order as second baseman Gonzalez on the third base side of second base. So huge hole on the right side for Obi. One and one on Obi. The teams have also had a hard time against Zeal getting the running game going. Team is just one of two against the Miami right-hander with bullpen action behind Zeal. One and one on Obi. A big cut and a miss at a fastball. One and two on the Duke center fielder. Tie game, last of the seventh. Obi fouls it away. And it's playable for Torres, who can't find it. And fortunately for Obi, it falls. Just unfortunate there for the Hurricanes. Straight up, even with the bag just about. Here we see the reaction. Torres never saw it. Zeal hustled over. And it is kind of that twilight time of day here. Now you're going to tell me it's a low sky? I'm not saying no, it's just a high sky. <laughs> not now, it's a twilight sky. The first and Clark back standing up. But it is, I mean, might have got lost in the lights, you just never know. Yeah, just unfortunate for Miami there. Should have been first out of the inning, but Zeal going to regroup here. And that's why you have your ace on the mound. Obi. Out to center field, racing back is long. On the warning track, he makes the catch. Obi put a charge in it, but tough to hit one out of here today. One down and brings Tyler Albright to the plate. Obi, who gets some Matta boys in the dugout after some after a really quality at bat there. Got a break with the ball dropped in foul territory. And now let's see if Albright can come through for Duke again. He had the two-run single to put the Blue Devils on top in the fifth. One on, one out. Albright into right center. This is Viegas for out number two. Back to the top of the order now. Zach Morris coming up. Give a credit to Zeal, especially after the leadoff hit batsman to Clark, has really bared down and let his defense do the work behind him. Without a doubt, and love the trust that the Miami coaching staff has in their ace to allow him to work through this. Chopper foul at the third baseline. Strike one on the Duke's second baseman. At this point, wouldn't be surprised to see Duke try and steal a base here with two outs. Time is called. Chris Pollard on his way out. And not sure what he's asking about here. Morris back in. 
Good pitch over the inside corner. Strike two. Whatever the intention, it didn't bother Zeal, who has been really, really productive here. Threw that one down and away, and a great block by Perez to save a base. Been so impressed by Zeal, just how competitive he is and how he handles the moment. He's competitive, he's calm, he doesn't get out of his own element. Very, very impressive. Quick throw to first, but Clark back easily. He's got a mound presence, and he's not an overly intimidating physical figure, but you can just sense the confidence that he has, and that plays a role in the gamesmanship. Swing and a miss. Back to the breaking ball, and Morris. Here, opponents hitting 226 against him. Facing 8-9-1 and one in the hurricane order, and attacks Jimenez with strike one. Phelan, go ahead. I will, thank you. It was my turn. My, my hand was raised. Okay. 23 and two thirds, he saw the 34 strikeouts against just eight walks, and he has been the go-to guy in all late inning pressure situations, save situation or not, for head coach Chris Pollard of the Blue Devils. Worked an inning in two thirds in the win over Liberty on Tuesday, and gets a strikeout here. Good start for Bielinson. Jimenez has retired to start the eighth. See the replay here. Went back to the breaking pitch. Starts in the zone and then disappears. Good shot of Charlie there. Bielinson, who set the Duke single season record for most appearances last year, took the bound 39 times. Into shallow left center, three Blue Devils converging. Look at the wind, push it back toward the infield, and Clark makes the play for the second out. Yeah, good patience there. Clark did the, exactly what you're supposed to do. You turn and run instead of just drifting, and then was loud with his voice and loud with his arms, calling that ball and then circling under it, battling the wind and making the play. Obi coming in hard from center field. Normally, if he can get there, that's his ball, but Clark, the veteran, making no doubt that he was going to be able to camp under it and make the play. Villegas, one for three today, was also hit by a pitch. He's got a couple of RBI. Slow roller to short, Clark up with it, and Bielens in a one, two, three, eighth inning. Just what the duck. Back in the fifth inning, but man, has he been good. Ben Miller. Out to right field, hit fairly well. Villegas going back and makes the catch on the warning track. So Miller went to the opposite field and Villegas able to track it down. Seen really good defense on both sides. Uh, balls in the air have not been easy. Miami's made multiple fantastic plays on the infield surface. Now Gracia. Searching for his first hit. And takes low, ball one. Back to Zeal. I don't know how he projects at the next level, but his competitiveness, his demeanor, you know, things that have nothing to do with arm talent or athletic ability, you know, in watching him live for the first time, you know, certainly checks all the boxes. Gracia shows bunt and takes a strike on a ball that gets past the catcher. Don't often see a pitch that was dropped by the catcher called a strike, especially one that was halfway to the backstop. The one, two. Now two and two. Yeah, right there, Zeal not wanting to give in to Gracia. 2-1 breaking pitch in the upper part of the zone. And that's ball three. Payoff pitch on Gracia. Just got a piece to stay alive. 
We did discover Gage Zeal, no relation to former 16-year major leaguer Todd Zeal. Are we sure? Maybe the spelling of the last name being different <laughs> was a key tip there. Foul away, still three and two. Todd Zeal, 31 home runs for the Dodgers in 97. Mm. How do the Dodgers do in 97? Not great. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. Three and two. And fouled off to the left. Good at bat here by Gracia. He's fouled off three straight, three two pitches. Pitch number 99 for Zeal. And he's fouled off again. Really phenomenal at bat here from the rookie right fielder of the Blue Devils. As Zeal gets ready to uncork pitch number 100. And it's ball four, so Duke's got the go-ahead run aboard. Yeah, great battle there between two really good baseball players. Zeal obviously on the tail end of this outing and Gracia showing the patience that he has shown all season long, relatively uncommon for a freshman to be able to walk in the door at this level and be productive in that manner. Brings Bravo to the plate. Zeal, you remember, threw 118 pitches last week as that ball rolled to third, could be two. Cuvay goes to second, on to first, and Bravo able to leg out the back end. Seems a little disjointed at second base here. Let's see. I don't know, maybe just had a hard time getting it to second base on a ball where Gonzalez could handle. Good hustle by Bravo. And that could be it. Let's see. And last time up, Krusen got the best of Zeal with an opposite field double. Good off speed there for strike one. Zeal halfway through his fourth time through the order here in the eighth. Has pitched another masterpiece tonight. Runner goes. Pitch is served, fouled on the left field line, and Cruz a little upset with himself there. And now Miami using a very significant shift. Three infielders on the right side, and Cuvay, the third baseman, is right at the shortstop position. Fastball upstairs. Still pretty good life on the fastball from Zeal. That one at 93. And on the outside corner, strike three. Zeal painting the corner and eight strong innings from the Miami A's. Good was he for the Hurricanes tonight. Simply fantastic and not unexpected. No. Yeah, obviously last weekend against Clemson, a complete game win, 15 strikeouts against zero walks, complete game victory of the seven inning variety against North Carolina. Bunted by Syrup, the first baseline, right at the bag, he's safe! And look at Bielinson, he's hot. And Chris Pollard comes out. Matthew Schaefer made the call. And if you read Bielinson's lips, he said, I got him. And Duke head coach Chris Pollard will come out and we'll take another look. Great bunt by Sear and obviously great hustle. A little miscommunication there. Tough to tell from that angle. Can't tell from that angle either. I don't think this is gonna be able to be overturned. 
wonder where Bielensen felt he tagged him. Because if he gets him on the lower leg, I think the hand has already been applied. And he is safe. And Chris Pollard will get an explanation. An important wording there, getting wording that the call was confirmed, which is what we saw there. Bielensen never yeah. applied the tap. He missed him on the back. And now Cuvay, 0 for 3 with a walk. Cuvay takes a strike. Not bunting in Duke defensively, did not think he was going to bunt. Neither did I. Definitely not bunting now, down in the count, two strikes. New school baseball here. Sacrifice bunt, no longer a thing. Dribbles that one foul. Sear does lead Miami in stolen bases with three in four attempts on the season. That fastball misses. Does not take a lead like he has any thoughts about stealing. Balenson misses low, and the count's two and two. So Bielenson, who was ahead in the count, nothing in two, but now finds himself in an even count here with the Miami third baseman. The right-hander delivers, a swing and a miss. Went to the fastball and got him. Bielenson's second strikeout. Upstairs in the zone. Probably ball three, but tough to lay off for Cuvay. Really well executed there by Bielinson. Now a swinging strike by Gonzalez. Same location upstairs. Nice game for Gonzalez, three for four. Three singles, including an infield hit. And that's inside. Don't discount the defensive prowess of Gonzalez either at second base. A couple of great plays in the field. As Stone struggles to <laughs> catch that one. Not sure what happened there, but no harm, no foul there as it didn't get away from him far enough for Sear to take off. Going here, swing and a miss, throw to second, got him! And I think Duke wants to challenge batter's interference here. Or just, no, Chris Pollard wants to play no doubles. Great throw by Stone. He came out and put his hands to his ear. <laughs> what are we doing? Great throw by Stone. Terrific throw, using the turf to his advantage. They've practiced that a million times, so Wallace Clark knew exactly where that ball is going to land as to what kind of bounce he's going to get to him. And you're right, Chris Pollard came out <laughs> quite an aggressive nature, but he just wanted to make sure he got the attention of his outfield who take a couple steps back each. And the, the no doubles sign is similar to the earmuff sign that you give when you want a replay. 3-2 from Bielinson, and that's strike three. Gonzalez rung up, and he's got some word. Alex Stone will start things for the Blue Devils. And takes the breaking ball for strike one. Great start there for Robert. Drop a breaking pitch in, work a little backwards action and get ahead. Fastball outside, one and one. Robert did work an inning against FAU in the midweek. Stone, a long ball here, would win it for the Blue Devils. He's just trying to find his way aboard. Ahead in the count here, two and one. 
Now a head and count, are you looking for one pitch in one spot if you're Stone? Yeah, you're only looking one spot because new pitcher, make him throw a strike. He did. And he did. That certainly wasn't the one to swing at, so good process so far here by Stone. 2-2 two -two pitch. Stone takes ball three. Great outing today by Gage Zeal. Three earned runs and four hits over eight innings. Five strikeouts and three walks, 104 pitches. Now the payoff pitch coming on Stone. Out to right field, out goes Torres. Viegas coming in. It's Torres who drops it in foul ground. Couple times in foul territory. The Hurricanes have struggled in the late innings. Yeah, really difficult play for everybody here. Again, that ball off the bat of the right-handed hitter will naturally tail away. And Torres running away from home plate. The ball coming over his head into foul territory. Tough for Villegas to help him out. Long run from him in right field. So Stone gets uh, extra life. And grounds one to third. Tricky hop played nicely by Cuvay. And airmails the throw. And Stone up, digging for second as the ball gets away. And the winning run in scoring position for Duke. We told you the Hurricanes have had issues fielding the baseball. That's the sixth error of the year for Cuvay. Yeah, we'll see what happens here on this play. Time is called. And a lot of confusion here now. We'll get a pinch runner for Stone. Harrison Rogers will come on to pinch run. Yeah, and with Stone being pinch run for, we saw this earlier in the Duke game as we see the replay here. Two hops, good pick. He looks at it, maybe just didn't feel comfortable with it. Felt like he had to rush it and threw it over the head of his first baseman and then Stone obviously easily into second base. We saw a game earlier this year. The middle infield is probably what you would call double play depth. Not looking for a double play, but just to knock anything down. And sure enough, Clark squares to bunt, but does pull back. The outfield is certainly in, looks like about five or six steps from normal depth. Clark had a big RBI hit for Duke in the fifth. He's also been hit by a pitch tonight. Bunts it. Rogers goes to third. So does the pitcher. Rogers is safe. Yeah, it's the right play for the pitcher to try and get that lead runner because that's the only one that matters right now. Clark's bunt is good, not great. The throw is good, not great. As we take a look at the replay, does he get the foot in there? Probably so yeah. because the, the tag is on the backside knee. And now Obi will be intentionally passed. That will load the bases. And what that does for Miami's defense, you now have the force play at home plate. Runners in first and third, obviously, no force play. A double play up the middle doesn't do you any good if the game-winning run scores. And Tyler Albright, who had the two-run hit in the fifth, which tied right the point. That point gave the Blue Devils the lead, can be the hero for Duke tonight. Albright slashes one foul. Outfield here does not have to play all the way in. Look for Rodgers to maybe get a little bigger lead at third base in case. Swing and a miss, 0-2. The pitch is uncorked to the backstop. Not very aggressive there at third base by the runner. 0-2 on Albright. And stays alive.
Albright does not have a hit with the bases loaded this year. No two. Just missed. Remember Gutierrez in left field just came into the game a couple of batters ago. One ball, two strikes on Albright. Strike three. A huge strikeout for Robert. And now a ground ball gets you out of the inning. Big time response there from Robert. As we see the replay with two strikes. Low and outside, but caught enough of the plate for Barry Chambers, the home plate umpire, to call strike three. Now Miami not going to play double play depth up the middle. Morris hitless tonight. Cuvée a couple steps behind the bag at third, middle infield in, first base in. 2 and 0 oh on Morris. And now, are you taking until you get a strike if you're Morris? You're certainly taking this one. And a low strike granted. It's two and one on the Duke second baseman. Good pitch there from Robert. Tough position for a rookie right-hander to be in, but see if he can work his way out of this jam. There's a strike. Two and two. Back-to-back -back off speed pitches there. And now Robert looking for another big punch out. The 2-2. Two -two. And Morris able to fight it off. Nice job there by Morris to fight that one off. Keep this plate appearance alive. Two and two on Morris. Robert pitches. And that one, ooh, fouled away. Just got a piece. And fortunate Perez couldn't hang on. If you're Robert, what are you coming back with here? I think you're coming back with a fastball. That's what you've, you know, kind of gotten to this point. 2-2. Two -two. And again, fought off by Morris. What do I know? Breaking <laughs> pitch. And a great one. Been a lot of off speed here to Morris from the right-hander. So he's seen 91 and he's seen 76. Bouncing ball, tough play, and the Blue Devils are out at the plate. We'll get a review. Well, not even just that play, but to get us to this point. You yeah. know, the error to kick off the inning. Here comes the call, by the way. You know, then they don't get the play at third, so it's first and third, nobody out. Intentional walk to load the bases and then to respond with a strikeout. Yeah, clearly the right call. Yeah. I don't know why it took us so long to get arrive at that point. Yeah, I, I think Duke was hurt by the lack of aggressive secondary lead and then the slide was not, or did not appear to be everything we could to get to home plate. Miller trying to keep his hitting streak alive. Comes up empty there. Miller, you saw the note there, 0 for 4 tonight. He's got five straight multi-hit games, and he's hit safely in 10 in a row. One and one on the Duke third baseman. Yeah, regardless of what happens here with Miller, Nick Robert has been fantastic to get to this point. To third, and the Blue Devils win it! Miller the hero on Friday night!